This is the Nebraska Greats, a weekly podcast as a service to the Nebraska Greats Foundation, which serves former collegiate athletes facing medical needs and financial challenges. Your tax-deductible contribution will change the life of a former college sports hero. Please give online at negreats.org. And now, here's your host, Corey McEwen. Welcome, everybody. This is, I think, my third podcast for the Nebraska Greats Foundation Celebrity host celebrity with a capital c Corey McEwen here um and if you gotta google the bio i completely understand it was an 03 to 07 bio for the black shirts and we are at super celebrity status this week because we have got one of my favorite people in the world one of your favorite huskers in the world and before i introduce him, when i was deciding on where to go my senior year of high school i did my research i took my trips I went to camps. I did everything I do to make an educated decision. And when I was researching the University of Nebraska, I wanted to see exactly what my chances were at coming in and playing early as a freshman, maybe a redshirt freshman, sophomore. And I I look and I see, okay, let me look at my recruiting class. How good is it? Great class. Good. I see this name there. Okay. I see that name. How do I know that name? So I go, I do my research and I look, oh yeah, we've got that name starting at middle linebacker. Oh wait, their uncle played, their father played, they're a stud family and that's the Rude family. Now, I was excited. I look at Bo Rude, my, my age, my classmate coming in, committed to the University of Nebraska, deep roots in the program. And my best friend at the time back in Chicago, his name was Sean Hill. We actually made up a joke about the Root family before we even met him, before I got to campus. And that was at that they were people eaters all the way down. That <laughs> They just ate people. They consumed people on the, on, on the, they were so mean, consumed them on the football field. And my guest today, one of those, one of those tough Roots, it's Bo Root. Bo Root, how are you, buddy? Hey, boy. Uh, I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on the show. I think, I think that, uh, it's funny you started you started saying that i remember the first time that we met and <laughs> oh, no. after, so, yeah. so this is a family i must after, remind you this is a family program so i just must remind you of that before you go too deep into the story appropriate oh yeah one of our appropriate I, I remember we met and i think it was shortly after we met you basically you you came clean to me you're like I had created that you were something of a monster. And now that, you know, and I'm a pretty, I'm not a big guy. I'm not like all muscled up. I'm kind of a, a lanky, wiry guy. And you were, and I, you know, I'm not like uh, Mr. Meathead necessarily. And so you were, you were a big take it back that I wasn't what uh, you had created in your own head uh, that I was going to be. Uh, I, I remember meeting you, it was like a summer workout day. And like, it was, I think your first day of campus. And you came up and you said, Corey, do it. You know, and I was just like, who's this guy? Who's the Chicago guy? I, I liked you immediately, so. Well, it, and it only snowballed from there. We were in the dorms together during fall camp, taking every snap next to you, going through drills. Man, it feels like just yesterday, and my body aches actually just thinking about it. <laughs> well, because me, me and you have had a, a rare, I'd say nobody had uh, probably – more similar uh, experiences in a lot of ways than me and you did. Cause I remember our first year, we were the only two freshman linebackers at camp. And that means we had to do every rep of scout team for the whole camp, which if you remember when it was two a day, that was brutal. And I think me and you were like, we're like, is this really college? But I mean, it was so hard, but like we, we kind of throughout our career, we always like the two that had to take the most reps, no matter what, every year, we always had to do that. You know, and the, the mentality of the kids these days, if I want to come up and play, I want field time. I want a lot of camera time. Back then, it was such a grind. I had no problem. I took pride in the fact that we were getting those good linebackers like Barrett, Demario Williams, TJ Hollowell. We were taking those hard scout team reps against those guys. And really, Bo, we were getting better every single day going against those guys, even holding dummies. I mean, I remember, oh, and, yeah. then we, and then what we would have to do, because Coach Jimmy Williams would say, okay, now 
you guys hold the bags, get my two, my two rookies, my two freshmen, their quick reps. So you, we were really doing double the work and I, oh, yeah. and then it you, really then made us better fast. It made us line true linebackers our freshman year. Well, just having to go against the one offense for, you know, like say for like, it, it's crazy that, you know, they don't do two a days necessarily anymore. It, it's like, we did the true, like two day, like two a day practice in full pads. And I'll tell you what, you do three weeks of that. Like you do, it's just such a grind. And especially when you're like, you're taking all the reps, man, it's just like, I, I don't, I don't miss that. I don't miss, <laughs> I don't miss three weeks of two a day. That's for sure. I'll tell you what, you know, I, I, I look at how there's this, that quote, they call it load management. Now, you know, they want to reduce the chance of injury. You know, I, I, I read in between the lines of what Scott Frost is saying there on the, with the team and what the media is coming out and talking about. They just got out of spring ball and you, you, and you and I look back and our make you better. It was supposed to keep you healthy. It was supposed to get those younger guys more reps. And I had talked on previous podcasts about with Coach Callahan in our era. Coach Callahan was using those. I mean, in his head, Bo, it wasn't even spring practice. It was OTAs. He wanted to yeah. get you in. He wanted to rep you to death. And he wanted that team to get better. He wanted your starters to get better. And it really didn't develop much depth. I mean, I tell the story all the time, Bo, how they would put that rep sheet up on the big screen. That's, do you, that's do you what I was thinking. That? Like, that's what I was thinking when I was saying, like, me and you kind of were similar because it was always me and you, 300 reps more than anybody else in the team. It was insane. It didn't make any sense, even to this day. We were, this, the, Bo, if I'm out golfing and I just start getting a little pain in my ankle, I'm just like, I go, nah, that was the 06 spring. <laughs> 400. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, 400 more reps. No. <laughs> Because uh, this is because that was when they finally started showing us, which might have been a mistake on their part. They started showing mm -hmm. us our rep counts. And so I remember seeing that me and you were doing like it was over a hundred some full speed reps a day. And I remember my brother was down in Tampa at the time. And I go, I called my brother's like, let me ask him, Bert, how many full speed reps does your starting defensive uh, unit take? And he says, 30 to 40 max, never more than 30, 40. And so we started counting. We were doing 100 to like 120 full speed reps. And I was like, you wonder why we looked slow sometimes on game day because our, <laughs> our legs were just freaking just noodled by then, you know? And I never thought that that was the way to go. I never did. Yeah. I, I, we had good depth. And I always thought, Let's maximize those the talents of these younger players. Let's get them some reps. Okay, Bo, I'm having this conversation. I want, I want you to weigh in on this. I'm having this conversation the other day, and it was it was more geared towards professional athletes, but it, it it was the mentality that I had. I was talking about the balance in that competitiveness in your soul and the competitiveness in your in your heart, your brain, mixing together to say, okay, I want to take every single rep. On, on game on the practice on game day to get better because I want to I want the stats I want to make the big plays I want to be the best player for my team in that position but then on the other side of it that's that kind of selfishness kind of hurts you because you need to get some depth you need to get guys more reps and you need to get it actually behooves you in the long run to have that depth and that rest for a player like, you know, I think back in our days, the Lance Brandenburg, where you could go take three or four snaps off and you are 100% confident that that guy's going to back you up and do a great job. And, and I was yeah. thinking about that balance in my head. What are your, what's your thoughts on that? So I, I would say that for me as a defensive player, it mattered more to get quality reps than volume, where I think if you're like a quarterback or, you know, if you're one of those positions or it's a different sport where it's just like you just can't let, you know, it's the Wally Pip, right? Like, you know, Lou Gehrig was the, the next guy up, right? Like that's a different sport. I think when it comes to skills, which is like if you're a defensive player in football, like I think the freshness matters more than the volume of reps. And that was what I kind of took away from four years of being kind of 
run to the ground with reps was I was like, man, that's not helping me. Um, where I, I like the idea of like quality reps. Like I want you to go absolutely balls to the walls for every rep, give me three or four in a row and then like get your breath back. Right. Like you don't need to take a hundred reps of practice kind of just slogging through. And then like, yep. I, I would only say that going and saying like, that's not the way to do it. <laughs> You know, oh, that's right. Yeah, just think about the the jelly. We used to call it, your legs are just jelly. You're oh. you're thinking you're running a, in your head. You're thinking you're running that four four five forty, but it's really a four nine. <laughs> you know uh, yeah. why can't I, mean, I you're, why can't I keep up with Terrence Nunn today? It doesn't make any well, sense because you're, you're throwing the plow behind you as you're running. You know, it's like it's gonna be not, that's right, it's springy, right? We were we were doing. I remember we were always doing like our. Uh, we were doing the hot and cold tubs before games on like on a Saturday game day. So we were like, man, got to get my legs back. Like that's such a, a dumb thing to do. But, you know, it's like at the time we just they didn't get sort of that load management at all. Like it was completely just like, here's how we're doing it. Reps are going to win it. So I look at this this current roster that Scott Frost has on their defense. Their linebackers are coming back. They've got depth. But what do you want to see from these guys this year? Uh, from the defense specifically? Yeah, and the linebackers specifically as well. Because I know who you're watching on the field every game. The same people I'm watching on the field every game. Probably the linebackers, number one. Oh, absolutely. Well, I, I like – so I really like the uh, my brother's group, you know, with with Reimer, um, this Kovaleric, and with Henrich. Um, I think that three right there is, is, is going to be really solid. It's going to be an upgrade obviously from what we've had the last couple of years. Um, and Honus was supposed to be there and Honus would have been a nice, just, you know, additional veteran presence, but it's, it's looking like he's probably, you know, going to be out for the year. Um, yeah. but those, we got three guys that can play, uh, Snodgrass is kind of the fourth guy that he can come in, I think, and, and maybe, uh, he's really smart. He could come in and, and play if he needs to. Uh, as well, but I think those guys are going to be solid. I, I think the biggest issue, Corey, is that like Reimer and Henrich, they're kind of guys that they haven't been able to stay healthy for a whole year. That's kind of my mm -hmm. really. I think they got the skills. I think it's do they got the uh, the ability to just stay in the field. That's to me the big question mark at the inside linebacker position. It's a great breakdown. It's. Did you get a chance to watch any of the spring game? Did you have any takeaways from it, Bobo? Yeah, I mean, a little bit. It, it, you know, it's like anything. It's when you're when you're not tackling to the ground. It's like how much can you learn on defense? Uh, right. But I think our I like our defense in general. I think they're going to be uh, they're going to it's going to be an improvement. Um, but my big point is always like. We've got the the veterans. We've got the talent to be a really solid defense. But until we can rush the passer, like truly four guys can go out there and rush the passer, like we're not going to be elite. Like we're not going to be a top 10 defense until we prove we can do that. Um, but like I do think we have the ability to be one of these defenses in the Big 10 right now. Um, but like to go for, you know, under like Nebraska, you know, where it's like you had Stu and you had and Stu and secondary we had that's an elite defense, right? Those nineties defenses, like those were elite defenses. Like we haven't had elite in a while, but I do think that our current defense has a chance to be really solid, which when was the last time we've said that uh, you know at Nebraska, probably since like I don't know, twenty fourteen or something, like twenty fifteen yeah, since Riley got here. So that's, yeah. a, I think, a, a really good sign is like we got that veteran secondary, um, you know, veterans all over the place really now. You know, so that that's new for us is we're not we're not like super young anymore. It's like we we actually have guys that have a lot of reps, you know, the Jojo Domans. They played, you know, this is their third full year starting. It's like. You rem I mean, do you remember the difference between your first game you started and like your 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 senior year? Like you just knew more, right? The game just slows down. Every game plan seems easier to memorize, easier to execute. 
you know, when you're, when you're playing that first season as a starter, you're just like, go as hard as you can. If you make mistakes, make them, make them hard. You know, the coaches are going to evaluate you more on effort than they are on the men, on your mental part of the game, even though it might get you yelled at a couple of times. I mean, I remember every time when in doubt, rush the quarterback. Did we, did you, and <laughs> yeah. I, did, that, did you and I make you that got up? like 10 think, sacks that year? <laughs> yeah, I think, hey, I think we made that, that up. I, and I'll never forget the grading skill. You make a big sack on a third down, and then they go, Corey, 10 points for a big play, 10 points for a critical uh, third down play, um, minus 10 for a mental error because you were supposed to be <laughs> dropping in, co- in cover two and you're blitzing you had, the quarterback. You had the tight end carry. Hey, Q, you had the tight end carry. But hey, you got the sack. Hey, it every hey, time. Hey, hey, did we get the ball back or not, Cosgrove? We're a good shape here. Hey, you'll take that every time. That's worth it. It all, it all cancels itself out, right? Yeah. And you Ooh. know what I always remember? I remember coming in, we going into freshman year workouts, and I was there when you guys were played in. It's the Shrine Bowl, right? That's the yep. big game for you guys. And I remember seeing you out there, and I'm going, wow. I go, these guys look like they've got some talent. These Nebraska guys here, you know, from Chicago, Chicago's got is a good that area is big time football. There's a lot of good high school football. Nebraska's got a ton of good football. And I remember just seeing looking out there going, man, these guys have got some talent. But why the hell is the score seven to six? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Can we get some off? Because nobody can. <laughs> I look at this. There was no half offense the in pe- Nebraska. That's... Half the people are, are snoozing because it's a seven to six game midway through the we fourth quarter. Had... We've always had offensive problems in Nebraska here. It's, a, it's, it's, been, a, it's been a trend for years. And you guys won the state title that game, and I will forever go down on the record as saying that my high school senior team would have whooped your, your Southeast Knights, no problem. I'm thinking 42 to 13 in the state championship without a doubt. Now, Corey, I don't care about Nick. Corey, hey, I don't care about Nick Ba. I don't care about Andy just, Sand. We would have whooped you. <laughs> Let me just tell you about a dynasty, Corey. This is a dynasty. This is oh, decades, please. decades in the making. It's called the dynasty, baby. <laughs> oh, please. You, you know, you, you Southeast Knights never miss a chance. Every time I talk to a knight, they talk about dynasties over there. Well, the town. And wait a minute. So you always told me, too, that you think your basketball team could have taken our basketball team, too, which I, I, I know you had a tall kid, but, like, I don't know. I think, I think we might the Knights might take your football and basketball. Well, I'm I'm happy you brought that up because we would have whooped you there too. You, you, you're thinking talent versus talent. You're looking at me and you're looking at Sean Hill who played basketball the same exact way we played football. We're using every single foul. And if you make it off of that court without bleeding, you might have a chance. <laughs> Speaking, um, speaking I, of I'll making it off the court. After, after Sean. Oh, geez. Those two, those two would start arguing three minutes into the game. It'd be absolutely great. But, you know. They can't, yeah, they cancel each other out. They find out they were best friends after a quarter. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then no one's following anyone. No one's playing any yeah. defense. They're just happy to get the ball and get a couple points up on the board. Brother-in-law in it from there. Exactly. So you got, got the upcoming season. Over under six and a half wins. What's your prediction on the season? Over and under on six and a half. See, that's that's tough because if th- with this team, with this team and a normal to easy schedule, you take the over all day long. The issue mm. with this year is it is a brutal schedule. It's brutal in the sense of like six wins is almost a a good year. When you got Oklahoma, Ohio State, Michigan, Wisconsin, Iowa, Minnesota, it's like man, it's like that's six right there. So I, I'm going to be, I'm going to be a homer, and I'm going to take the old pick seven. But man, it's like it's by a nose, I'd say. <laughs> I'm what with you. you. I'm with you, man, because I'm thinking this year we kind of put more pieces together. We don't lose to any teams we're not supposed to lose to. We get a win on someone maybe we're not, we're dogs too. But I, I want some external help. And what I mean by that, it seems like Frost has always had a something every season that is 
really hindered getting up to 100% full speed. You know, the first game of the year, I think it was against Toledo, got canceled with the lightning yeah, coming down. Lightning. You know, yeah. that really took a big setback because you, you you play that game, you come out, you and those first games, Bo, you know, it's really just about we just got to out-talent you because everyone's figuring it out at full speed. The first game's more of a – a crap shoot, but the more talented team wins at home. We win that. Then you don't lose that Colorado game. Yeah. Yeah. And then you don't lose that Colorado game. And it's just a different start than COVID obviously. And there's always been an injury. Your quarterback gets hurt. I just want to, I just want some luck. I want another team to kind of have to face some injury. Another team have to face something weird and us be the ones at full strength for the first time. You know what I mean? I, I actually said almost the exact same thing where I say football guts have not been in Nebraska. And I always mean like the ball, you know, there's going to be moments in every game where the ball can bounce. Through. It's sort of just like, why, how did that happen? And I, I swear to you, in the 90s, every one of those went right for Nebraska. I'd say mm-hmm. in our years, it was a lot of things went wrong, but we had a few moments that went right. I think Frost era, they've all gone wrong. Like they've all truly like bounced the wrong way so far. Mm-hmm. And I think we're due. I really think we are due for those 50-50 things that kind of go our way. Those, those games that, man, we shouldn't have lost that one. This year, maybe we won't. You know, And so like, I, I think we are due for something good to happen. I agree. And speaking of something due for something good to happen, um, ne- Nebraska Greats Foundation, negreats.org. Please go take a look at what this organization does. They're doing great things um, for guys like Bo and I who have injuries from, from football, from our lives, that medical bills outstanding. You know, give generously at the website if you can. And Bo, I thank you for joining me, buddy. I mean, this has just been a star studded pack podcast for the Nebraska greats. I mean, I know Jim Rose is probably listening to this going, how am I going to top this? There's just too much talent. There's too much talent on the call. He can't do it. Bobo, bad dude, Bo Rude. Thanks for joining me, buddy. I appreciate it. Go Big Red, bud. Thanks, dude. Appreciate you having me, man. This has been Nebraska Greats, a weekly podcast serving the Nebraska Greats Foundation. You can find each episode on Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Play, and anywhere you get your podcasts. Please give generously to serve Nebraska's former sports heroes in need at anygreats.org. And be sure to follow the Any Greats on Facebook and Twitter.